All right. Hope you're doing well. We're doing live. We're doing a live video here on Wednesday night. For a lot of people, it's the first day back into school, or at least it is for my kids. And I think people are starting to think about the 2023 outdoor track season. So if you're watching this on Twitter, I shared something on uh, on Twitter with a link to YouTube where you can ask questions. I'm only able to see questions if you go to YouTube and ask them there. Um, if you are on YouTube and you're 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 coming into this live, um, I'd love to hear where you're from, where you coach, if you coach boys or girls. And uh, yeah, this is just a time for me to take uh, questions from you. And I'll be honest, this is something, this is a time for me to, you know, kind of check these algorithms, whether it's YouTube or Twitter, see how many people hop in, you know, spur of the moment unannounced. Okay. So I want to share something with you right now that I think you're going to find helpful. Um, this is something that you can get at, you can get this for free. And I'm actually going to just make this bigger and put me down there. Okay. Here's what this is. This is training for my track training system. And you can get this for free. These are five. Th this is every day you need for the first five weeks of the season for different athletes. So we're going to go in here and zoom this in a little bit. Um, so this is for a, an athlete who is running a 30 um, minute long run in their very first week. So that's what long run 30 means. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday means Saturday means they're going to do a workout Tuesday. They're going to do a workout Thursday. They're going to do a long run on Saturday. Okay. And phase one, I have three phases, uh, when I use my track training system and my cross country training system, phase one is from the, the start of the off season until your first meet. Okay. Um, and at, at least that's that what that's what it is in the track training system. Oftentimes, that's going to be an indoor meet. Um, that phase, by the way, could be as long as eight weeks, or it could be a little bit shorter depending on when your season is. But yeah, I just have shared this for free. This is this is five weeks for that athlete. Maybe you have an athlete that's starting with a forty-five minute long run. There's that athlete, fifty, um, fifty-five, and then everything is taken into account. Um, in terms of these workouts being a little bit longer, we're going to start with the fartlek run for this athlete, then a progression run, then a fartlek, then a progression. And then in week five, um, actually that got cut off. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to fix that. I've, I've, I've got the wrong document here. Well, um, I want to share something else with you, which is if you do go to, Oh, let, 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 let's go back and show you one other thing. So, um, there, there is the correct document, which I'm going to show you how to download. That's got um, more, more days in here. But um, I also have the post run work that you would do. So we do the red progression. They go red, orange, yellow, green. And I've shared that for free, the red progression. Here's what you would do on easy days. Here, here's what your post run work would be. Um, and then hard days, uh, we're going to be doing a, a little bit more work and we're just going to do the, uh, lunge matrix for these athletes. These are athletes that are probably pretty weak. Okay. But then orange gets quite a bit more challenging and you might do that in week two with all your athletes. Um, and then this is the easy days and then the, the hard day in there as well. So the question is now, and this will take me one moment to show you this. Um, the question is, where do you find this? So I'll show you that right now. Um, Oh, and I'll put this link in the chat on YouTube. So uh, when you go back to YouTube, you can find this there. All right. So here it is. And yeah, you just log in here. So the five-week track training system plans plus the red and orange post run. And I'm going to put that in here right now. Um, and I'm putting that in the uh, chat. Okay. So if if you go to YouTube, just, just click that link. You'll obviously share your email, but then you'll you'll get this document and you'll be able to uh, look at that right away. Um, some other things we're going to talk about tonight. I've got some books I want to share with you. This is the book that got me into coaching, Sacred Hoops by Phil Jackson. Great book. Uh, we have a very exciting book that just arrived today, the Boulder Running Clinics book. We'll give you a quick flip like that. It's going to be awesome. It's in color. Um, we've never had one in color this year. It's in color. So, all right, we, we've got some questions. Um, Brennan says, how much should you sacrifice mileage and track compared to XC? Oh, and here's one thing too. Sometimes um, I've got people who are, are asking questions who are high school athletes that are, you know, obviously not high school coaches. So Brennan, if you could type in, let me know if you're a coach or an athlete, that's going to change um, how I answer this question. Um, obviously we want to be mindful of, uh, yeah, I'm just going to answer those questions a little bit differently based on if you're a coach or an athlete. I'm going to click over here 
see what's going on on Twitter, see if people have any questions. Um, and, oh, I can share that tab. Oh, learning something every day. All right. Um, Andrew, uh, Denver Urban XC. I coach high school and make and middle school boys and girls. Andrew, it's so good to see you. Um, I'm going to be seeing you at the Boulder Running Clinics. Um, I was going to say a week from tomorrow. That's not true. A week and then two nights. I'm going to see you on Friday. Andrew, um, I, I would love to take any of your questions as well. I'd, I'd love to hear any of the questions you have. Um, that are maybe different, you know, from middle school or high school. Um, Brennan, if you're at Chaparral High School, I know you've got great training in Colorado. Um, but but yeah, how much should you sacrifice mileage and track compared to cross country? I don't think we ever want to sacrifice mileage. I think what we want to want to talk about is that, you know, Brennan, what are the things that, are, that you need to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis to improve? OK, so let's look at a individual session. All right. If we have a long run, we need to run long. If we have a long run, we want to do challenging post run work. That's going to be a long day. Your volume is going to be pretty high that day. Right. If you do that on Saturday, you, you are either going to take Sunday off. I don't like Sunday to be completely off. It could be off from running, but you might go for a 10 or 20 minute brisk walk. I like to see people do some of the mobility exercises. You can get those videos at coachjjohnson.com. Come back into Monday. Let's have our aerobic workout, you know, an easy run. You might be doing speed development, but let's just say you're doing an easy run and we're definitely doing strides. We're definitely doing post run work. When I work with with coaches and athletes, Monday isn't a huge volume day for us because what we're getting ready for is Tuesday, right? Tuesday is going to be a really hard workout. So Saturday was hard and Tuesday is hard. And if we look at what we're trying to do each day, Monday, we're trying to get our body ready for Tuesday. Those strides in the track season are going to be fast. But when you're using the terminology sacrificing mileage, I think it's so easy. And you're in a, you, you know, the state of Colorado where you're sitting and where I'm sitting is extremely competitive when it comes to boys distance running. And you know that to be good, you're going to have to run a lot. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is when Tuesday comes, whether you're doing a fart look workout or progression run, maybe you're on the track doing some 400s, maybe you're doing 600, you know, whatever it is. Uh, let's see, you're at Chaparral. So you would have, have access to Hills. You know, you might be doing a hill workout, whatever it is, let's work hard. And honestly, let's be uncomfortable on Tuesday and really get after it. OK, maybe coming back with an easy day Wednesday, maybe coming up, uh, back with another workout Thursday. I'd like to see athletes take an easy, really easy Wednesday, Thursday, really have a day where our strides are fast. We're feeling good and then hit it really hard Friday. But the idea, Brennan, I, I have a, I have a Koros watch. You either have a Garmin or a Koros or whatever. And this takes your data and it puts it up on Strava. Ty type in here if you're on if you're on Strava, because I, I want to address that, too. But. You know, for so many athletes, they have their mileage, they upload it to Strava, they see a number, and they want to equate that number in January and February and want it to spit out a 1600 meter PR, right? Um, you know, let, let I, I'm just going to throw this out there. Let, let's say you're somebody, uh, Brennan, on Strava. See, of course you're on Strava. And and that's great, man. That's awesome. You're you're a young man in the state of Colorado. I think, by the way, and people can, can, uh, can tell me I'm wrong on this one. I think per capita... Right. So based on our population density, we have the best distance running state in the entire country. I know Illinois for boys is fantastic. Girls as well. But boys is absolutely fantastic. But if you look at the population density of Illinois, they're definitely in the top 10 states. I think they might be in the top five or six or seven. The last time I checked, Colorado is a 22nd or something like that. OK, so you're in a, a crazy competitive state. And I understand if you're saying, hey, I've got to run this time to make the state championship. Um, but, but I think too often we're, we're trying to come up with a formula 60 miles a week equals blank equals 420 equals making it to the state meet and just get out of that mindset. Say, Hey, in the next 10 days, what do I need to get done? I'm doing two long runs, you know, because I'm talking to you on Wednesday and you know, maybe this gets you, you do your long run on Friday. So you got two Fridays coming up. I'm going to get in one hard workout. I'm going to get in a, in a hill workout. That's great. Those are those days. What are you doing on your easy days? Are you running your easy days easy enough to run your hard days hard? You're at, I, I should know where Chaparral is, but um, you're at roughly 5,200 feet of elevation. You've got to take your easy days very easy. Um, you know who Harrison Witt is. Harrison Witt was was coached by my friend Jonathan Dalby. Jonathan Dalby looked back at his training and Harrison took some really slow easy days on his way to being the... Um, state record holder in both the 1600 and the 800. So 
anyway, I didn't answer it directly, but I think I answered it uh, uh, in a roundabout way. Okay, Andrew says, I've seen Coach O'Malley mention sprinting two to three times per week. Where would you work that in during the offseason or work out long run days? Um, take a sip of water. Andrew, let's <laughs> let's skip ahead. Let's let's give you a little preview of what's coming at the Boulder Running Clinics. Okay, John O'Malley got his own page. Let's put that up here. Let's see if it. Oh, I'm testing this camera too to see if it zooms in. Um, this is from Kelly Christensen's presentation, and Kelly Christensen is the coach at Niwa High School. You probably know that. I just love this. There's Kelly. There's his uh, developing 800, 600 meter runners. Um, Coach O'Malley is sprinting from day one. They are doing fast work from day one. They're doing it two to three times per week. I think what Kelly's going to talk about is that that's, there's, we'll take a step back. John O'Malley's in his 20th year of coaching. I'm in my 20th year of coaching. I would say that John O'Malley is somebody who has coached 20 years, but he doesn't have one year 20 times. He truly has 20 years of coaching experience, meaning he's evolving every year. I'd like to think I have something somewhere close, but I, but I know I haven't changed enough every year. Um, there were some years when, um, you know, from coaching professional runners to, to doing some things with the Boulder running camps where I wasn't really changing how I approach training as much. Okay. If you would have met John O'Malley in year three or four, he wouldn't have had speed development and sprinting in this program the way he does now. Okay. And the reason I'm I'm sharing that with you is for you to just just calm down and say, hey, I'm I'm Andrew. I'm in Denver. I love coaching middle school kids up to high school kids. I'm going to be a great coach over the next 10, 20, 30 years of my life. Where's one day a week that I can put in some speed development? OK, I think if you had kids and 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 let's talk about one thing right now, um, you live I was, I won't say where you live, but I was roughly in your neighborhood tonight picking up my girls and the streets are horrible. It's super icy. Okay. And I don't know what the track at the local high school that we're both thinking of um, looks like right now, but you wouldn't want to do these speed development days until that track is completely ice free. Okay. But you can definitely be doing wickets slash mini hurdles. The, the, you know, wickets and mini hurdles are, are the same things. Kelly Christensen's going to show how he uses those little soccer cones and he has kids sprint over those. I think doing that on Monday, coming back with the workout on Tuesday makes sense. What I'm doing in the track training system, I, I'm very cautious with how I do this with coaches in the track training system. I really only want coaches who've done the cross country training system, which means their kids have had a, a, a whole season of doing post-run work with a lot of focus and a lot of intensity and doing strides two or three times a week. Now, this is an important point too. Strides, by the way, when I was talking about strides, we're not talking about jog and 5K pace. That's what we'll do the very first day of winter training in January, but but make sure you get my progression of strides document, okay? If you don't have that, um, I, I can put a link to that in this in this uh, YouTube thing. Somebody, If somebody can prompt me to do that, that'd be great. But the bottom line is, yes, we start strides at 5K pace, but we are trying to get to 400 meter pace and we're trying to do that as quickly as possible, but as safely as possible. That, that's going to take several weeks, okay, in my progression of strides. But when teams have done that in the cross country season, now we fast forward into January. And I think on Thursday, kids could do a speed development day and then come back with a long run on Friday, okay? But I think with your middle school athletes, um, if you were to coach my daughters in the Denver area, I'd love to see them, you know, sprinting on Monday, speed development, doing a fun workout on Wednesday. And then honestly, I think middle school kids don't need a long run Friday, maybe something else that's longer and faster on Friday, call it a day, run, run five days per week. Um, but the one thing that I'll say is when you're talking about two to three days, why don't you start with this saying, hey, the first week I meet my kids in with Colorado weather, every day it's sunny out, we are running fast. And it doesn't have to be speed development. It doesn't have to be speed development. One thing I really like, I don't know if Coach O'Malley does this, but I love 150 in and outs. Build up for 50 meters, run fast for 50 meters, run out of it. And I use that as, as part of my warm-up. Um, this is, you know, we should do a whole QA on this. Like, like under the heading of strides, which is a very simple kind of umbrella term, how do we get more, more sophisticated under that? Um, 
Okay, Andy, I had some knee pain around my T-band and patella area lately. Changed shoes since they were um, going on 400 miles. Yeah, that's a lot of running. Any idea what could possibly be? Andy, I, um, yeah, me, me sitting here behind the computer and, and you being where you are, um, I, I don't know what, um, what, what, what that would be. I think, you know, athletes, high school athletes who are really light, you know, maybe don't need, maybe don't need to change out shoes as often. But one thing I think is really interesting about our sport and, and, and I, I want to be sensitive to the fact that everybody's family, the, the socioeconomics of every family and school is different, but if you're in a school or, and maybe you, where, where kids are investing a lot of money in other sports, and maybe you're the sibling of, of somebody who plays club soccer, they're spending a lot of money on, on their sport. And in our sport, we pretty much buy shoes. Now we can buy warm clothes and whatnot if, if you're in a cold weather climate. And I think getting a great GPS watch for 200 bucks at some point is a great investment. But I think too often we say, oh, it, there's this runner mentality. And, and I definitely had it in college as well. You, you know, where I thought, man, I got to get as many miles out of my shoes as possible. If you think about it, if, if, ro if getting new shoes more often is going to keep you injury free, that's something you probably want to do. Another thing to think about, I think the, the super shoes are a really thoughtful shoe when you're coming back for an injury, um, just to, to, to basically have less impact with, with each, uh, foot strike. And I'm sure there's some people that are going to say, Hey, with that high stack height, that's going to be, that's going to do a weird thing with your IT band. Um, so I'm, I'm sure those arguments are valid as well, but I just think sometimes we, we fail to look at a super shoe as this preventative way, you know, to do a little more running in, in a safe way. Um, also says I'm a junior in the state of North Dakota, um, currently 1600 What are the best off season training tips you could give me to have a goal of anywhere from running 440 to 450? Um, okay. First of all, let, let, let's be process oriented rather than outcome oriented. And what I mean by that is the outcome you want is 440. I get it. You want to run seventies. You want, you want to come through in 220 and keep going, or you want to come through in 221 and negative split and run four or excuse me, 219 and run 440. I totally get that. Um, North Dakota, by the way, you're at, a, you're at an amazing state based on population density for, for how good your state is. Um, I think it, you know, it may be the most underappreciated state for, for boys distance running. There, there's so many good, good programs and kids taking it seriously in North Dakota. Um, but the one thing I would, would say now that you can be doing is you need to be able to go to the track. Like, like if I came to your house and assuming it was like a crazy warm day in North Dakota and the track was clear, I should be able to wake you up. You could do Jeff Belay's warm up, which you can find on my site. You could do some strides. And I'm, and I could say to you, Andy, we got to do six by 200 in what? In 35. And I'll tell you one in a moment. And then you get a 200 jog. Six by 235. Why do we have to do that? Because that's 72nd pace. What's 72nd pace for a 400? That's 440. If you can't rep 200s at the pace you want to run a 1600 meter at some point, how are you going to be able to do it come April and May? Okay. So when I talk about this progression of strides, and I'm actually going to, um, as I'm talking to you, I, I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, because I want you to have this document. So when you look at this progression of strides document, you've got to make sure that you're on top of your strides from day one. So I'm putting it in the comments now. Um, most of the time you have to share your email to get that, but not tonight. Tonight's everybody's lo uh, lucky night. And and by the way, I'm, I'm so glad you're on here live. But the idea is when you check out that document, hey, when the footing sit when the footing's safe in North Dakota, you can do your strides at 5K pace, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds at 5K pace. But let's get down to 3,200 meter pace and then 1,600 meter pace. And let's be doing strides. It might just be these in and outs I'm talking about, but we're the middle 50s at 800 meter pace. And by the start of the track season, if the footing is safe, wouldn't it have been great if you could progress to where you're doing 400 meter pace as the middle 50 of a 150 in and out. So you build up for 50 meters, 50 meters at 400 meter rhythm and just feeling good. Not like straining to run it, just feeling good, feeling fast and then running out of it for 50 meters. So how about this? Like I talked about, consistency is key. You already know you have to build the aerobic engine, long runs, progression runs, fartlek runs. You, are, you should know that you need to strengthen the chassis, right? All the post run work, all the general strength. The mistake so many high school runners make when they have goals like yours is they're not ready to rev the engine, 
Okay. And they're not making that like it, it all three are equally important. Everybody wants to, to put in volume going back to what was his name? Brennan, Brennan, I, I loved what you talked talked about with, with mileage and volume. Everybody wants to put in volume, but not everybody's really willing to commit to doing these strides. Okay. Um, the state qualifying time for the 1600 is 440. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, if the state qualify, qualifying time is 440, of course you want to run that time. But focus on the process. Say, what do I need to do in the next 10 days or 14 days to get better? What, what's today? Today's the 14th. Um, there's going to be Monday, let's see, the 2nd, the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd. Look at January 23rd and say, what do I need to do in the next 19 days between today and January 23rd to be better? And then shoot me an email um, you can, or, you know, you, you can, well, you can just ask a, a comment here under this YouTube live and I'll get it. Tell me what you did during that time and tell me what you're going to do for the next two or three weeks. And just, just focus on, on those periods of times. Okay. Uh, Brennan should alter G be incorporated if training is healthy. Mm. That's a good question. Uh, would it be good to use for easy days? If there is only pavement available because of snow, man, Brennan, if you can get on an Alter G and your parents, um, you and your, your family can, uh, can afford, and I'll use your, uh, use your, your term, you know, you, you can incorporate this in your training and it's not going to break the, the, the bank. I think there's a lot to be said for that. The one thing I'd caution you is, you know, if you're normal, uh, if you're somebody who does a threshold run or you do a progression run starting at like, you know, 640 pace and you get down to 550 or something like that, don't say, oh, I'm on the Alter G and I've, you know, I'm running at 70% of my body weight. I'm just going to crank out four miles at 540. Be mindful of what's going to happen with your lower legs. If you're running too many fast miles on the Alter G, so you've got the aerobic engine to be able to do that run but your lower legs and even your hamstrings maybe can't handle that. So be really mindful how much volume you're doing at a fast pace on the Alter G. But um, if you, and, and, and the other thing I'd caution you against too is the Alter G looks cool when you see professional runners doing it on Instagram. And it is cool to be running on one. But the flip side is you're staring at a wall or staring at a TV or whatever. That's not as fun as being in, in chat at, you know, near Chaparral High School and going for a, a nice run, right? And I think I'd limit it to, you know, just a quick workout in and out, a progression run of 25 minutes, a threshold run, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes in and out. Don't spend more than an hour on that, that treadmill and then save your, you know, I'm going to assume you're somebody who's doing like 70, 80, 90 minute run, save your long run. Um, we're in our weather, you're going to be able to do your long run by the middle of next week where everything's, things are dry. Um, that that's a, a great question. Andrew says, uh, been following the progression stride since early December. Kids are looking strong. Awesome. Um, Andy said, thank you. You're welcome, Andy. Hey, we're going to check in on Twitter. Um, feel free to ask some more questions and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this is going. I think what's happening is it's live on Twitter right now. Oh, and there's one viewer. This is weird. This is like a surreal thing looking here. We'll share it with you guys. See if you can see it. Okay. How weird is that? Let's see what the lag is. That lag's pretty good. Okay, let, let's go back to something. Else. Let's go to the Boulder Running Clinics. And um, this is something that's coming up that uh, that uh, Andrew's going to. I just want to scroll through here. How awesome is this? Shannon Thompson, NAU sports psychologist. She is fantastic. And uh, her slides are fantastic there in here. Sean McCafferty, Boys Coast Christian Brothers um, Academy, New Jersey. I screwed up the website. There should be a hyphen in there. Um, his boys have made it seven times to NXN. Kelly Christensen, his girls were second at NXN this year. Howard Rush, R Russ, uh, his girls at Beaver Creek were ranked number one in the country last year. And Thor Espenson. Um, here's, a, here's a fantastic fact. Anybody want to guess what the score they run the he's from Oregon. They run the 1500. I've converted it to a 1600. Guess what his school record is in the 1600 since he's been coaching there. Um, so those are our speakers. It's going to be fantastic. I, I, I want to share. Ah, I don't need to share that with, with you now. I was going to share the mental skills course, but we can do that some other time. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions and if not, I'll quickly go through some books that coaches can check out. Obviously if you're a high school athlete, you can check out consistency is key. 
Um, it's not going to be until February, but we're, we're going to go, I say chapter by chapter, it's 15 keys to unlock your potential as a high school athlete. That's the subtitle of the book. And when I say 15 chapters, they're really short. You can read this book in 90 minutes. What, if we did the math on that, that's uh six seconds, six seconds, six minutes per chapter. And there's a, there's a preface and an introduction. There's a conclusion. So we're looking at like five minutes per chapter, but I'll go through each one of those in February. And we'll talk about that, that then. Um, Okay, Andy says, a lot of the times I feel like I can be so much faster, but I struggle so much with the mental aspect. What's your view on beating it consistently? Okay, we're going to share something here um, because you really need to check this out. And and I'm not like trying to sell something here, but this is my mental skills for high school uh, runners course. And, and I'm going to share this here in the chat uh, because... That's the whole point of this is to help somebody. To me, it's, it's, it's a, a heartbreaking thing when somebody isn't able to run to their fitness level. So I'm just going to read what the, what this program does, you know, runners, can it help you deal with pre-race anxiety so you can race to your fitness level? You're going to learn to focus during practice so you can run the last mile fast and you'll learn visualization techniques that'll help you run faster. And then we talk about mental skills. Shannon Thompson's going to talk about is one of visualization. the biggest parts of this course. Um, turn that off, but she's, she's amazing. She's the sports psychologist within AU. So the bottom line is let's, let's talk about some, um, common things that are happening with athletes. First of all, you're in, and, and Andy, you need to be honest about this. If, if you, if you have a great winter of training, January, February, go great. And you run your first race in March and you're like, I've got to run five Oh four. I've got to run 76s. I've got, I've got to run a six second PR. Do I think you could open up in 504 if you have a great winner? Sure. If you've done all these strides, if you've maybe done one or two track workouts, but what you need to focus on is executing a certain type of race plan. So maybe getting into a good position in the first two or 300 meters and then just grinding a pace that feels good. And then like I talk about consistency is key. I think from with 500 meters to go is a great place to try and go faster. So with 500 to go, that's coming in on the home stretch or that's, that's the last hundred going into the uh, bell lap, right? So we speed up on that hundred bell lap bell. They ring the bell and then the first curve. So that's 200. Then we, that's fast. And then we go faster for the back stretch and the second curve. And then what's fastest, the last hundred meters. And if you executed that race plan, the first week of the year, whether you run 511, which is slower than your PR, or 459 and break the five minute barrier, your very first race out, I don't think it matters as much as you going in with a plan and executing it. Okay. And, and so I really think you're going to have to take time out of it. Now, the other thing I will say, and, and other people can, um, can, can comment on this. If you're doing this progression strides, your, your legs will be able to turn over at a pace that's faster than your PR. You don't have to do, you know, multiple repeat 400 workouts, workouts that people, people might call anaerobic workouts. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think that's one thing to think about. And then honestly, check out this course. Those videos are for free up there. Check out Shannon Thompson talking about visualization and then check out Dan Iverson talking about pre-race anxiety. Um, what's going to be coming up in February. I'm going to be adding to the, the, the course right now. It will help every athlete, every high school athlete with their mental skills, but it is a little cross country, uh, focus, but then I'm going to be adding track specific modules and interviews for 800, 1600 and 3,200. Um, if, and, and if you purchase it now, you have lifetime access to that course. So you get everything that's in there now, which is nine or 10 hours of videos. Um, I walk you through some guided visualizations and again, they're for cross country, but I'll be adding them for track. And then, um, when we add the, the, the track content later in the year, it's great. But the one thing I would do is just, uh, check out that link, scroll through it. And you can see, um, you can see some of those testimonials in there. Um, Finn says consistency is key is great. Thank you. Appreciate you saying that. Um, strides helped me immensely after working hill strides into my workouts. My kick has improved so much. Awesome. So interesting that, um, that more high school runners are on here on YouTube where I didn't know, I'm just kind of talking out loud here where, um, there's more people on Twitter who I think are high school coaches. So yeah, this, this, this is great. I'm enjoying doing this. Well, with that in mind, I think I'm going to save my book thing. Um, I wanted to keep this to about 30 minutes. Um, I need to, 
I need to make a, a phone call tonight. I need to to check in with my kids. And uh, this was their, their first day of school. I think that's so weird that school starts on a Wednesday after the break. Why don't I take one, one or two more questions and then we'll sign off. Um, Andy says, trying to think of questions here. I definitely have some here. Just can't think of the right wording. No worries, man. Hey, we're, we're going to do this again. And Andy, the other thing too is I do... There, there's things I don't do a good job in terms of communication. I do a very good job answering YouTube comments. So this will be a YouTube live on YouTube. You do have to click um, when you go to my YouTube profile, you have to click on the live videos, but just ask your question under there, you know, tonight, tomorrow, later this week, and I will get back to you. Um, yeah. So let's go through the mental skills course and just hear from, actually, I'll show you something else. Let's do this. You know, he, this is from, um, this is a high school athlete here. I'm going to read what, Ch or what Chance had to say. The best thing about this course is it a lot. So this is a high school athlete. Everybody else uh, here is a coach. The best thing about this course, let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, the best thing about this course is it allows you to be more confident heading into races, which ultimately leads to better racing. This course is a great value because you get access to a ton of helpful videos like the guided visualizations that you can rewatch or re-listen to before each race. This course, course helped me race faster this season because I was calmer and more confident coming into competition. This allowed me to get out of my own way and race to my fitness level. Um, he's he, he, <laughs> chance his, uh, his high school coach is, is a fantastic coach. And so he knows that terminology, which is one that I use, which is we're trying to race to our fitness level. And that would be a great thing to end on tonight, both for Andy and everybody, which is let's get really fit this, this winter. Let's do our stride so that neuromuscularly we're ready. You know, if we build this big aerobic engine, but we haven't been doing strides, we're not going to race to our, our, our fitness level, right? We're not going to race to our capability. And then I've, I've got this really fun thing. I'll, I'll type it in here. Um, it's going to be February 11th, 18th, 25th. We're going to do a free virtual thing online. If you show up live, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have some fantastic people speaking, some fantastic athletes speaking. We're going to talk about the mental side of running, okay? It's not my place to be telling you how to, to train and, and telling you what, what workouts you should be doing. That, that's what you and your coach need to talk about. But I, I want to help you with the, the mental aspect of things. And so that's what we're trying to do. If your fitness level is here, but your mind is is preventing you from running at that level and you're running here. We want to fix that and, and have you racing to your fitness level. So um, Yoshi, um, I'm in college right now and I'm in community college. So there's no XCR track. Can I find good ways to train and compete when I'm alone? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, I think there's so many things. The, the, honestly, the one that comes to mind is I think it's a free app on the on iPhone and on Android, the app, the Nike run app, there's Nike coaches. Um, the reason I was thinking about this is, uh, Nike is sponsoring our coaches social at the Boulder running clinics. And so, uh, the, the local Nike rep was talking about coach Bennett and coach Bennett is this big personality, but more importantly, he's extremely knowledgeable. He, he really knows what he's talking about. So I check out the Nike app and I'm not sponsored by Nike. I mean, they are sponsoring my the, 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 this event I put on, but I, I just think that that run club app, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun. There's a lot of youthful, honestly, branding to younger people. So if you're in college, you'll, you'll love that aspect of it too. Okay. Um, we'll take one final one from Andy and then we'll close out of here. Our season starts on the 27th of February. If I, um, and Finn says coach Bennett is a W. Um, Oh, I forgot I could put this stuff up here. Coach Bennett is a W. Okay. I'll put up, uh, Andy's question. It's better to read it there. Our season starts on the 27th of February. If I had started today for my track training, would it be too late for building the that bank or would it be fine? No, you're you're totally fine. You you've got plenty of time. Okay. Just take it a day at a time. You just need to take things a day at a time. Today was Wednesday. Maybe you see, you know, I said check in on on January 23rd in the comments. Why don't you just check in on Sunday and say, what could I do over these next five days? You know, could I get a long run in or could I get a challenging aerobic workout? Let, let me share one other thing with you. Um, these are the four key workouts. Actually, I'm going to give you something else. Make sure to get my emails and then you'll get this document, the four key workouts every runner should do. And I'll get that here. And then you'll also get Jeff Bollet's warm up. 
So putting that in the comments right here. Um, so Andy, check out the, that document and, and you'll learn different workouts you can be doing now. Farlick runs, progression runs. A um, few weeks from now, you can do aerobic repeats. Okay, uh, th this was great. Thanks for your time and attention. And we'll do this again soon. And I'll probably give a heads up. Oh, and I guess I should say the YouTube stuff. If you if you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. And I don't even know where that little alarm bell thing is, but you can click the alarm bell thing so you get notified when this, this stuff happens. Um, all right. And Andrew, I will see you next Friday. All right. Bye-bye.